since it's Good Friday, I thought I'd share a quick message about that day. Really nothing good about it. John chapter 13, really through 18, talks about the whole event. It's a discourse. And 13 talks about the, uh, the betrayal, Judas's betrayal and Peter's denial. And I'm, if you ever wonder how that scene went down, if you read all four Gospels, you can put the whole picture together. You get Because each Gospel gives a little piece of what went down. And to kind of put it together for you real quick, Luke and, Luke and, uh, and Mark kind of t says where the place is at, the house, and how you'll find the house. You know, there'll be a man carrying a bottle of water, and he'll lead you to an upper room where we can have the, our Passover dinner. Matthew 26 adds one little piece to, of the puzzle that's not in those two, but it tells, adds to the story that you are to tell the man that Jesus says, my time has come. And as soon as you tell him that, he'll know exactly what to do. Then, we go back to John chapter 13 and 14. really should be uh, one chapter because they break that up. Remember those verses were put in by man, and sometimes they put them in some bad spots. And this is another one of those bad spots. 13 and 14 shouldn't have been broken up. So they have dinner. All the guys together, all 12 they have fun. They're talking about the kingdom. Who's going to be this one? Who's going to be that one? And Jesus is listening to them having all this fun. And uh, they kind of finish up eating and he kind of washes his hands. And he goes, I want to tell you something. One of you is going to betray me. Well, that stopped the party. You can pick up. Peter jumps right in, starts talking to John. And they, who, not me. It's not it's going to be. And then the whole table gets going. It's a big buzz. And while that's going on, we can see in John's gospel, he says, Judas leans into Jesus. Master, is it me? And Jesus says, it's the one that I dip the bread and wine and hand it to. Go do what you got to do. Judas leaves. He leaves the Last Supper. Now, he was the treasurer. He was in charge of the money. The boys just thought he was going out to get more supplies. They had no clue. They were still chatting about who's going to betray him. And Peter says, Lord, I'll die for you. And Jesus said, uh, I'm telling you, Peter, you'll deny me three times by the morning. By morning. And Peter just doesn't go into that. But then Jesus talks about who he is. Talks about giving us the Holy Spirit. That he's the true vine. That it's going to get sad for you. You're going to lose me. You're not, you don't know what's going on right now. But you're going to really say it, but that sadness is going to turn into joy. That sadness is going to come into joy. Then he walks off to the garden. He takes Peter and the sons of thunder, James and John. He loved those guys. He knew what was going down. I want to skip over to Mark's gospel because he co he covers Peter's denial too. It uh, John covers it too. John John like I said John has a discourse. He covers all three denials. He, he looked up to Peter. This event, and we've got to remember John wrote this when he was very old, so he had a long long time. He was the youngest of the disciples and. 
this is the last gospel John, John was written, probably when he was close to 93, 94 years old. And uh, he loved Peter. And he, when this thing went down, he it took a hit, their relationship. Matter of fact, in John's gospel, he doesn't even mention Peter walking on the water. You'd think he would just put that in there if he wrote about it, but he doesn't. And John also talks about Peter's restoral in, in 21. You should read that. It's very powerful, uh, their relationship. But back to Mark. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The arrest, the prayer that Jesus does before they crucify him. Again, takes John and James and Peter. He asks the boys to pray for him. He's going to go out a little further and talk to Dad about what's going down. He knows. He knows. But he wants to know for sure if there's any other way. Is there any other way this wrath could pass over me, Father? Nothing. Silence. Goes back out to his friends and they're, they're sleeping. He gets him away. He says, guys, I need you. I need you right now. I need you to pray for me. And back out to dad. He goes a second time. Dad, any other way? This cup could pass from me. Silence. Back out to the boys. They're asleep again. He rouses them up and then out he goes again. Father, any other way. This wrath could pass, but not my will be done yours. Silence. Can I ask you, what do you think Jesus was asking his father to do? Rewrite the book? No, Jesus knew by 12 years old his destiny on the cross. He tied himself to Isaiah 53, the suffering servant. He knew that beating was coming. But he had told the Jewish leaders that he was the one Moses talked about, the prophet, that they must listen to. And he told them, you're going to kill me. And like Jonah, I am going into the belly of the earth. I am going to hell. I'm going to hell for you for three days and three nights. And then I'm going to rise myself from the dead. But I want to ask you, you're fully human. Jesus was fully human. He's going to hell for three days and three nights. What's three days and three nights outside your flesh? Well, that's outside time. That made him sweat. That made him sweat blood. A thousand years is a day and a day is a thousand years to the Lord. He had reference finite period of time, separation from his father, made him sweat blood. Now, there was no, nothing good about this day. Our king paid the price for us. Everything we did wrong, everything we were going to do wrong, everything we thought about doing wrong, he nailed to that cross. I pray that you take that tonight, that you believe that, and you put that right in your heart, and you just change the way you think about things. Because Jesus died for you. I appreciate you watching this. I'm here for you. Give me a private message anytime. God bless you on this good Friday.